So this is my TR reflection on my field experience. So where I did my experience was in on Alaska at that YMCA helping with the inclusive program. And I also worked for the La Crosse Parks and Recreation, working with older adults with disabilities. And then I also went through the school and worked with some of like the St. Baldrick's activities and like doing games and such with that. Um, the populations I worked with were children with ADHD, autism, Down syndrome, I think that's it, and then adults with uh, various types of disabilities, some of the ones that I mentioned as well. Um, some activities we did were a bunch of board games like Candyland, um, Sorry, and then we did like card games like Go Fish, um, some wanted to play poker and like games like that, but like pretty simple ones. Um, we also did like carnival games, so we set up like mini like bowling pins and stuff like that and kind of use like a bigger ball to hit them down. And then for the inclusive program, we I did the soccer portion. So we played a lot of soccer outside and inside the gym, kind of little small um, games and like warm up activities like sharks and minnows with a soccer ball, stuff like that. For me, the best part of everything was my favorite part well, I couldn't choose my favorite area I did it because I really liked all of them. But my favorite thing overall was to see improvement. And where I could see that especially was with soccer. Um, I was able to, like, see, like, we probably had, like, 12 kids there from ranges 5 to 20. And some of the kids, like, started out, like, not being able to listen very well or kind of shy in the beginning. But we... Um, we did more name games, more like high fives, inclusive things um, to interact with the kids with each other and with the coaches and volunteers. Um, so that's kind of the best part for me was to like see improvement and see how people were, inter the kids were interacting and um, trying really hard to like improve at the game. Um, some challenges I experienced, I guess. So this is my first time working with children and adults as po um, with disabilities as a population. Um, in the past, I had grown up with a few classmates that had autism or were on the spectrum, but not really like worked with somebody a different age as I was. So like younger kids or older adults. Um, so I feel like that was um, a challenge for me to just kind of, I don't know how to interact with these people. I like I just didn't know what to expect. Um, it's not really something you can look up because everyone's different. Um, so I'd say that was a challenge for me at first is kind of like figuring that out and getting help from um, my my volunteer co-workers to um, improve my communication skills. Advice for the next person, I would say that just really get to know everyone's name in the facility that you're working with. Um, getting to know the kids and like the adults, it really like makes them happy just to know like calling them by their first name. Um, kind of like just like making them known, making sure that you care about them and you like in, in the beginning, like, you do care about them, but the more and more, like, you know them on a personal level, you really want to see, like, their improvements and, like, how um, they play the game or, um, like, learn new games, like Go Fish or something. Um, and what I learned, so I learned a lot, but the big message to take away from me was I learned that people with disabilities, adults and kids, um, are so, 
you wouldn't re- I feel like for the like the more normal like non-educated person you wouldn't notice their capabilities at first but when you get to like see them work one-on-one learn about them and see them on a personal level and actually like have conversations with them you really see like how they can flourish and become like just improve like become better like benefit their lives in the long run through leisure and it's different for every individual but you can just see how um different types of communication people use for different people or like how they act if they like to give hugs high fives like how to like deter that if you don't want that how to embrace that if you do everything like i i learned so much especially uh, mainly around communication and finally i guess some last thoughts i have would be a few experiences that will stick with me forever there's a kid named Soren that in my inclusive program, and he was um, a very bad listener <laughs> at first. Um, he you could call him by his first name, you could, like you could do anything. The mom was like, "That's okay. Like, um, it's okay if he's not listening." To kind of be like, "Hey, lay down the law with him." So we kind of started doing that, and. Um, over the course of the few weeks, he became very comfortable with um, us volunteers and coaches and tried their very best. And he tr- started trying his best to like, he would give us hugs all the time instead of high fives when we'd say like, oh, good job, Soren. He would come sprinting and bear hug us instead of um, instead of before he would just not listen and just go kick the soccer ball around like behind the goal or something like not even a part of the group while someone was like trying to get him to come back for like 10 minutes and then it um when he did get distracted now it was it was down to like three minutes maybe he would be distracted and then come back um I mean sometimes once in a while it still would get bad but there was so much improvement he had so much trust in our coaches and really really liked us at the end and he is such a good kid, so that experience will stick with me forever. And another one definitely would be, um, I can't remember his name, um, but I think it, I think it was um, Bob, but he was at the Lacrosse Parks and Rec. We threw like a Valentine's Day party and a game night, and it was kind of open to really anybody. And he had Down syndrome. But, oh, my God, he was the funniest person I've ever met. He was so happy all the time. He loved playing um, track and soccer and just everything. We always called each other, oh, here comes trouble. Like, he remember, he didn't remember my name either, but we just called each other trouble all the time or, like, a cheater because we'd play Connect Four or um, Bingo and stuff like that. And apparently I was always cheating to him and I would always call him trouble so he would walk in and I'd be like here comes trouble and he would kind of like laugh and call me like oh no you're trouble and I don't know he just always put a smile on my face whenever I went to the um building we did those games at and it was really fun so yeah that was my whole experience in about nine minutes (laughs)